Listen, there are so many amazing free plugins out there these days. So I took a little bit of time to research which ones I thought would be the best for mastering and getting you that analog tone. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Fabio here from Noise. Welcome to the channel or welcome back. If you've been here before or want to keep coming back, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. So today we're talking about mastering. Well, what is mastering? If you're new to mastering, it's the final process of completing your track so that it's ready to send off as a demo, play on the radio and play in the car. Mastering usually involves making things louder, balancing with a bit of EQ and sometimes compression. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what plugins I'm gonna use, how to use them, and then at the end of the video, I'm even gonna show you how they work on loads of different genres. So let's list them really quickly. We've got the Coral Baxter, which is a great Bax style EQ. Essentially, it's a couple of filters and a couple of shelves. Next, we got the Buster SE, which is based off a very famous SSL glue compressor. The TDR Nova, which is an amazing dynamic EQ, which I'll be using as a sort of multi-band compressor today. Chow Tape, which is a tape emulation to add a little bit of saturation and heat. Next is the Rare plugin, which is a tube EQ, which is great for sweetening the deal with those broad strokes. And then last but not least, we've got this Clipper by Venn a couple of limiters, and a fantastic metering plugin that everyone should have, which I just discovered. Now, before making the video and creating this chain of mastering effects, I actually reached out to you guys on Instagram. So thank you to everyone who sent their tracks through. I've been using them as test subjects and the amount of tracks I got and the versatility of tracks from house to trap to pop was fantastic. So thank you to everyone. We're going to start today with a track by a producer called Well Z and the track is called Organ Roll. Let's take a listen. I want to note that I am actually using the Sonar Works at the moment to correct my room. There is another video on that if you want to go check it out. I've just dialed it down to 50% so it's not the max how I'd usually use it, but this is also going to help me make some more accurate decisions. So I wanted to make this process as easy as possible for myself and for everyone else. So what I did was I built this into a rack. And don't worry, I also built it into an Ableton rack for 10 and 11. And I even made project files slash channel strips for Pro Tools. Cubase and FL Studio. You can all get your hands on this, don't worry. The Coral Baxter is a great sounding set of filters and shelves. And what I've done here on the rack, as you'll see, is I've added this low cut and this high cut here. So those are predominantly the two features that I use the most on the Coral Baxter. Of course, you can go in deeper if you want to. Let's start with the low cut and high cut. Remember, always be extreme when you're dialing things in. Put it all the way and then pull it back. It's not destructive. You can always come back one step and it just helps your ears tune into what's going on. So really, there's not that much low end in this track. So I don't want to do a massive low cut. I think 12 or 18 is fine. And I actually don't want to cut out the high frequencies more than 70. 70,000 hertz is obviously like inaudible to humans, it's only audible to dogs. But what they say is with this plugin is that 70,000 hertz still creates this like slight drop off which takes away any of those digital kind of harsh frequencies. I buy into it. Okay, next we've got the glue. Now this is based off an SSL G bus. This is another amazing free plugin. Remember all these plugins are free. And all I've done is I've assigned this dial here to the threshold, all the settings are already set up. So we've got slow attack, fast release, ratio four, um, I actually don't put the high pass filter on because I like the way this compressor reacts to the low frequencies.
really sometimes just one db of compression is enough the other thing i'll say about this compressor which not a lot of people know is that it does react more to the sort of mid-range than it does to the low end which is why sometimes the sidechain filter is not necessary okay next we've got the tdr nova now what i've done is i've set up each of these bands as limiters with different attack and release settings some of them were the sort of stock attack and release settings which sounded quite good and as I increase this dial, you'll see here, it brings all of the thresholds down at the same time, which is quite cool. I thought this was quite nice and quite an easy way of getting traction with all of the thresholds at the same time. Now the aim with this is just to basically set up limiters or compressors for each individual band. This compressor here before, right? This does everything at once, which is great. I mean, that is like ultimately what you want a compressor to do a lot of the time. But sometimes being able to deal with individual frequencies in different parts of the spectrum with different attack and release settings, it means that you just have a little bit more control. Now you can go deeper with this, you can change the attack and release if you want to. My idea with this was I want to create something that's easy, simple to use, and that can be applied to any genre. The makeup gain is here just in case we lose a bit too much volume when we're doing multi-band or regular compression. So we can add it back if we need to. Now what I've got here on the channel underneath is a muted version of the original without any processing so we can flick sort of back and forth really easily without having to turn a bunch of plugins on and off. Now this is really important for two reasons. One, so we can A-B really quickly, and two, because sometimes when you're mastering you can lose the essence of what the original was like. Now I feel like we've lost some of the high frequencies, I definitely feel like it could do with some low frequencies, so we're gonna go directly to the tube section. Now the tube section is based on a Pultec EQ, this is an amazing free plugin by Analog Obsession, and what's really cool about this, and you'll see as we adjust, the low and high frequencies is as we boost we also cut at the same time now by doing that this is a trick that's commonly used with this eq we basically are able to add warmth and fatness in the low end but without adding mud and in the high end we're able to add that nice shine but without increasing the harshness so check it out as i increase the tube low you'll see the boost comes up but so does the attenuation and in the highs we have a similar thing. Attenuation just means cut. Now don't forget like these rack dials, they're a starting point. They're just to get things going and then we can be a little bit more surgical if we need to. Let's add some high frequencies. Now, let's come back a step. Now, the heat, the tape plugin, this Chow tape plugin, is actually before the tube EQ. Now, the one thing about this plugin, it is great and it is good, but when you add heat or you add warmth, some tape emulations, they might add a bit of mud and they might also take away some of those high frequencies. So that's something to be aware of. Although it may sound better in one way, you may compromise in another. 
And that's what I found with this plug. Although it is good, and I like what it does, when it is increased, you will notice a slight dulling of the sound in a kind of warmer way. So it will feel bigger in the middle, but then kind of smoother on the sides. So what I tend to do when I'm using the heat is that I compensate for the loss in low or high frequencies as it does this kind of like curvature, right, of the uh, of, of the kind of the tape, almost has a bit of an EQ to it. And I just compensate with the tube low and the tube high to make up for it. At the end of the day, we're not trying to focus for hours and hours on mastering. We're just trying to apply a few settings that beef things up a little bit, make them sound sweeter so we can move on, bounce it out, put it on SoundCloud, send it to our mates and focus on making the next track, right? Next, we have one of the first limiters in line. Now, this is the Frontier Self-Adaptive Limiter by D16. Love D16, love everything that they do. This is a really interesting plugin. I don't really feel that it's a limiter. It feels like more of a compressor. It's got this kind of squelchy, tubey feel to me, but I thought it was quite nice and it had a lot of character. So I thought it would be good first in line as one of the first limiters. Now I've got this set up so that as I turn this up and you'll see the gain comes down because it's got an auto gain on it. So as you pull the threshold down, it naturally brings the volume up. I don't like that. So I like it when I'm adding a limiter that everything remains the same volume so I can hear what the difference is. Now it is very sensitive and it is not transparent at all. So make sure that you're subtle with it, opening it up and using the meter to see as well as hear is actually really useful with this plug. And obviously do use your ears, do focus on using your ears, but having that in front of you, apart from the fact it's beautifully designed, is quite useful. Next we have the Venn Audio Free Clip. Now, there's a lot of great clippers out there. There's a lot of great clippers out there that are very inexpensive. I did want to make this video about free plugins, but I was tempted to sneak in a cheap clipper. So you've got standard clip and K clip. If you can get your hands on either one of those, I would recommend it because they just do sound better. They do sound sweeter. This clipper is okay. You know, it's not the best in the world, but it is free and it is a clipper. So we're using it here on hard, so we're using it as a hard clipper, We've got the oversampling, post oversampling clip at the ceiling. And um, basically what you wanna do with this clipper here, and I've got it all lined up for you guys as usual. Again, same in the Ableton rack as well. You want to bring this dial down with this, so you can do it on the plugin of course, until it kind of reaches where that line is, which is the signal peak. So as soon as it crosses that, it will clip. Too much clipping is gonna result in distortion, so listen up for that. Now, okay, the final three plugins. Now there's only two left on here, but there is a plugin that I'm gonna show you in a second that I think you're gonna love, and that's the meter. But we don't really need to use the meter until the last minute because it can be distracting and we wanna focus on using our ears. I've got two instances of Loudmax here. Now, one of them is just dealing with the initial peaks and then the other one is bringing the overall volume up. Two limiters in combination, well, actually three plus a clipper, is what's gonna enable you to get your tracks to sound really loud. Check it out. I'm 
I'm so impressed by how transparent this limiter is. For a free limiter, it sounds incredible. Like, it's a great, great, great piece of kit. The limiter afterwards is going to raise the volume. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna bring this down. I'm gonna bring it down about 10 dB and then I might need to bring it down a little bit more, but we're just gonna increase this. Now you wouldn't usually do this when you're you know, mastering. It's just that I don't want it to get really loud and uncomfortable for you back at home whilst you're listening and watching this. limiters need to be treated with respect. Too much limiting is going to result in distortion and too much clipping is going to result in distortion and so on. So do listen out for that. Don't limit too much. You're going to ruin the dynamics of the track and you're probably going to end up with distortion. Now the first limiter, as you notice, both sliders come down at the same time. They're linked and what that means is as the threshold comes down, the output comes down so we can do a sort of leveled check. Now with this one here, when the threshold comes down, it actually automatically has an auto gain. It increases the volume, which is why when the one slider comes down, we notice it go up. Now, last but not least, we have Ulean. Ulean is a fantastic, fantastic free meter that helps you measure LUFS. What I usually aim for with LUFS is underneath eight, around the seven to eight region. That tends to be more than loud enough. Don't forget that a lot of the loudness does come from the mix. So don't beat yourself up too much if you can't reach eight LUFS, even nine is okay. Maybe you'll need to revisit your mix, but don't spend too much time on that if you're a producer. The idea behind this chain and these racks that I create is to make your life easier so you can focus on what's important to you. Maybe mastering is important to you, so invest more time in it. So you see, even at minus 0.1 and with the true peak, I'm still actually going over that. Um, so I turn down one more because I do want just that 0.1 decibel of headroom there, just in case when it converts to MP3, there's any intersample distortion, which sometimes there is. And look, you can see I'm at minus 8 LUFS. There's, the momentary LUFS is minus 5.4, minus 6.8. So there are moments in which it gets really loud. Now let's compare it volume wise to the original. It will obviously be much louder and then we'll turn that final limiter off and I'll show you the before and after when leveled at the same volume. it's actually monitoring lower in volume, but the perceived volume is much louder. It sounds fatter, sounds like a little bit more analog, a bit more rounded, a bit more meaty. And the original does sound good, but it just sounds a bit light and a bit thin in places. So I think this mastering effects chain has really done what it needs to do. But obviously we're not gonna stop there. I wanted to put this to the test and try it on lots of different genres. So I have it set up on a bunch of different records that you all sent me through Instagram. So thank you again for that. And I put it to the test. As you can see, we've got Electro Trap, Pop, Happy Trap, Dubstep, Afro Beats, and of course the track we just did, which is a house record.
Okay, next at the other end of the spectrum, we have a pop record. When they see us, they all be talking about us. Let me ask first, do you wanna be my day? I mean, you can really hear it on that one. And I just want to add that all these records have been leveled, like the mastered version is actually leveled slightly lower than the original, just to kind of compensate for those peaks. But we can hear it's fuller, it's more balanced, but it just goes to show how easy it is in this format to bring it down and adjust it without even having to open a plugin. So there you have it, a bunch of different genres where these effects are applied and they're all signal dependent. You know, this one here, I had the heat turned all the way up. Some of the other ones I had it turned up ever so slightly and it's great to be able to just experiment really quickly. Ultimately, there is no one setting or one button that's just gonna make everything sound amazing. However, there are a bunch of effects and a bunch of dials that can help you get to where you need to be as quickly as possible. So don't forget that this Logic Rack, this Ableton Rack, plus channel strip settings for FL Studio, Pro Tools, and Cubase are available in the link in the description below if you wanna get your hands on them and take your mastering to the next level with these amazing free analog plugins. I hope you enjoyed this video, but before you go, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you very soon. It's a big love from Noise. Peace.